What's going on everybody, C4 here. Welcome back to the channel and you know it's a serious video when I bust out the Eagle starter jacket. Today is the Madden 21 realistic rebuild of the Philadelphia Eagles. I'll be dropping it on Sunday. Uh, the night game is Eagles and Niners. I'm sure I'll have a very fun post game reaction, but because it's a late game that might not be up till Monday. So I wanted to give you guys something to do and I just wanted to preemptively get an Eagles rebuild going. So if they do find a way to lose to a beat up Niners team, which they probably will find that way, uh, I'll be like, all right, well, then I can at least kind of like try to keep rebuilding Philly in, in Madden and hopefully uh, end up winning a Super Bowl and putting a smile on my face. Uh, I wasn't so sure if I wanted to kind of like get a fresh roll of the dice here and start as if this season never happened, but I thought that was kind of the easy way out because Philly obviously has had some injuries. We've started out terribly, so I, let's we're starting with the active roster. The active season, week four against San Francisco is where our starting point will be. So let's meet the roster, man. If you have never rebuilt the Philadelphia Eagles, they are probably the hardest team to rebuild in Madden. Because after year one, their salary cap goes to complete shit. And the last couple years I've been rebuilding Philly, it's been tough. Because there's been sentimental value. Guys over here on the Super Bowl team, that's gone. That is absolutely gone right now. I do not give a shit if you're on the team that won the Super Bowl or not. If I have to get under salary cap and you're not playing well, you're gone. I would say the only two players that are immune from getting released or anything will be Jason Kelsey and Lane Johnson. Everyone else, yeah, perform or get out of here. So I want to meet the roster. Quarterback is going to be a little bit of a rant. We will save that for last. Let's meet the rest of the team. Looking at our draft picks here. At least we got, you know, a full slate. We have a, a second five that we got from Dallas. Dallas traded us this so they could get Tyler Bidash, who is maybe the most talented center in the draft. They got him fourth round, and he's starting for them now. And yeah, I think he's been pretty solid. And uh, you look at our own roster. We could have used a Tyler Bidash. Jason Kelsey's like on the bubble of what retiring every single offseason. And we just have zero death really behind him. So that's phenomenal. Can't wait to use that fifth round pick on a guy that'd be hurt. Uh, special teams for Philly is solid. Cam Johnson's a solid punter. I think Jake Elliott's one of the more underrated kickers in the NFL. So I'm happy with that. Jumping into the safeties here, we have Will Parks, Jalen Mills, and Marcus Epps. Epps is a special teamer. Jalen Mills making the switch from corner to safety. Like I have been begging the Eagles staff to do for some time. He's, he's been a mixed bag. I think more bad than good, but I, I, I do think that they've kind of been trying to force him to be the Jalen Mills, and he's not really that. And I was thinking because of the short and offseason stuff, switching from corner to safety, uh, it's going to be a tough transition. I would not be shocked if Mills starts to play even fringe solid, I guess, from where he's at right now in the second half of the season, just the more reps he's getting at strong safety. But right now, he hasn't been particularly good. And given the fact that Will Parks is the same age, and a lot of Denver Bronco fans were actually telling me that we got a good one here in Will Parks. He's a local Philly guy. We'll go We'll go Will Parks as our starter at strong safety. Looking at free safety, we have the veteran Rodney McLeod and Kayvon Wallace, who was actually probably one of the... There's probably three picks that Philadelphia made in the draft that I really liked. He was one. Uh, I think there's a lot of upside there for Kayvon Wallace. He's a very versatile player. Did a lot of things for the Clemson defense. And long term... I'm going to try to make him our long-term free safety. But for the time being, I think we have Rodney McLeod on a one-year deal. Uh, we'll, we'll just let Rodney McLeod uh, be the starter for this season. Looking at the secondary, we got Trevor Williams, who actually used to have a star dev. He's been a bubble guy. He played a little bit. I think he actually he's hurt now. But he played a little bit, and he's been okay. We have Strap LeBlanc, who's a solid slot corner. We have Avante Maddox, who's a solid slot corner. We have Nikel Roby Coleman, who has not played particularly well, but has a reputation of a good slot corner. And then we have Darius Slay, who we traded for to get from the Detroit Lions. So you have Darius Slay, finally a big corner, who's actually been probably the best player on the Eagles so far this season. He has been exceptional. No Namdi Asimo worries here. But then you just like, all right, we got a great outside corner. Let's pair that with nothing but slot corners. It has not worked out for Jim Swartz. So I'm looking at this. Um, I don't know if we can make a trade. But we got to get an outside corner. That is definitely a priority for us when it comes to if there is a trade to be made or the first draft. 2020 draft, 2021 draft, first couple drafts. Bringing in another corner is what I want to try and do. Linebacker core is the shits. Nate Gary is horrible. We'll go Davion Taylor. He's a project player out of Colorado. I'm going to get him reps right away. Nate Gary is... Nate Gary is not a start. If Nate Gary, like I said, the, the thing with Nate Gary, he's made some plays for Philadelphia, but generally he's not really that good. If he was a death linebacker, a guy that if we had an injury crisis and he was playing and he was getting burnt and stuff like that, I'd be at least I'd be able to say, you know, well, he's a depth guy. He's a guy that, you know, can play okay here and there, but he's not a starter. The fact is, and the problem with it in Philadelphia is he's a starter. He's the guy that's like, 
Got the visor on. He's been taking Mexican supplements. Looks stronger than ever. And Jim Schwartz is his, it's his guy. Jim Schwartz is riding or dying Nate Gary. And he is absolutely getting picked on every single week. Not good enough to be a starter. Good enough to be a backup. So I'm going to go Davion Taylor. See if we can hit the ground running with the rookie out of Colorado. Middle linebacker is not much better. We got TJ Edwards, who I liked. I would have drafted TJ Edwards, and we got him last year as a UDFA. He's really good against the run. He's just athletically, yeah, 77 speed. He's every bit of that 77 speed in real life. He's an old-school linebacker that gets picked on, and he can only play really early downs, but he's solid. He's probably, pound for pound right now, the best linebacker on the Philadelphia Eagles. A lot of side linebacker, we got Duke Riley and Alex Singleton. Again, you know, whatever. Both these guys should be depth linebackers, but they're starting on Philadelphia. So, um, yeah. You know what I'm doing actually right now? And this is something I was going to, I literally was going to try to tweet him, but I couldn't find his at. There was a free agent at linebacker that I can't believe Philadelphia has not called in yet. And I am going to get him. And I'm going to use him as long as I can find him. Uh, he's not even that good, though. Ugh. Whatever. I think this is what Philly should do. 100%. Voshan Joseph's on the market. He was really good at Florida. I am bringing Voshan Joseph in, and I'm going to make him a linebacker. We have to make a cut. Um, is Deshaun Hall actually on the Eagles right now? I thought we got rid of him. Either way, I think we can probably make a better cut here. Uh, let's throw Sean Bradley on the practice squad. Sure. But yeah, I want Voshan Joseph. I think Philadelphia right now Fix a linebacker core. Someone like Voso. He was a beast of Florida. Modern day linebacker. I am going to make him a left outside linebacker. So we'll go TJ Edwards on the inside. We'll go on the outside. Davion Taylor. And Voshan Joseph. His rating should go up now too. And there you go. Solve that problem. You're welcome. Defensive line. Now there's a lot of money invested in these three players. Fletcher Cox. Who... Isn't really playing with it, but at least over the last like three years has been the second best defensive tackle if you classify Aaron Donald as a D tackle. Javon Hargrave was our big money free agency signing. He has not looked particularly good. He's been coming off an injury. He has some excuses, but he has he has not lived up to this reputation that he was coming over from the Pittsburgh Steelers as a really, really good defensive tackle. Malik Jackson actually looked kind of solid, but very expensive. He is overpaid for what his role really is on Philadelphia. And at least for in terms of a rebuild, he's definitely one of the contracts I want to look to move on from sooner than later. Uh, yeah, it's a strength of the Eagles team, but it's also very expensive. And it'd be really nice if you literally just took like that Malik Jackson contract and like paid Jordan Hicks and have Jordan Hicks still in our linebacking core. How much better this defense probably would have been. Right defense. Uh, actually, well, let's see. We have uh, sure we got a highlight X factor there for Fletcher Cox. I think Hargrave has a star dev and I think Jackson has a star dev. Uh, defensive end. So we have Derek Barnett entering his final year. 77 star dev. Um, he's not a bad player. He's just never really been worthy of that first round selection. And I did not like... This is actually my first big reaction video. I reacted to this pick and I was like, I don't hate Derek Barnett. He's absolutely not in the first round. Like, Arlen Humphrey was still there. Ugh. It's an annoying pick. We got Avery, who we gave up like a fourth round pick to get from Cleveland. He just doesn't play. And we got Vinny Curry. Oh, Vinny Curry. He's still reliable. He's a nice guy. I like having him on the roster. Then you look at the left defensive end side. We have the veteran in Brandon Graham, who's actually played fairly well this year. I think the argument can be made that Brandon Graham and Darius Slade have been the two best Philadelphia Eagles on either side of the ball. Or Josh Sweat. Josh Sweat has actually had a little bit of a breakout year. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make Josh Sweat a starter. I think Josh Sweat has been probably the, I'm not going to say surprising, but like you always want to see every single year the guy that's going to take the next step. Like, oh, he's looking a lot better this year. And for Philadelphia, it has absolutely been Josh Sweat. And it's not been Derek Barnett. So I am going to have Josh Sweat be my starter. Derek Barnett will be, whatever, the top rotational edge guy. Offensive line at right tackle, we have Lane Johnson and Jordan Mailata. Well, a little bit of preview here. Mailata is set to start at left tackle tonight against the 49ers. That's going to be that's gonna be fun to see. I mean, he's been... It's a mystery. He's probably not going to be particularly good. But he is an athletic freak. Who knows? Who knows? But at least we're talking in left, uh, right tackle. Lane Johnson is as reliable as it comes. Philadelphia is so much better when you have him in the lineup. And he's my lookalike, so that is pretty cool. Right guard, we're going to have Brandon Brooks out for the year. I think he's the best right guard in the NFL. Filling in, we have Matt Pryor and Jack Driscoll. I, much like Kevon Wallace, 
The other pick that I really liked of the three was I like Jack Driscoll. I like Jack Driscoll. I think he has tackle guard flexibility. So I am probably going to go with Driscoll as our starting right guard for the time being. At center, you have Jason Kelsey, absolute legend for the Philadelphia Eagles. Yeah, he's awesome. Uh, left guard, C. Marlowe's actually had some injuries. Where is what he got? Where's Herbig? Yeah, for some reason, Herbig's not here. Nate Herbig, who's actually been kind of solid for the Philadelphia Eagles. He's on our practice squad, maybe? Yeah, he is. Okay. I don't know why those moves made. But either way, uh, left guard, we got C. Malo, who's solid. Just, you know, just a solid bench guy that kind of paid to be a starter. He's not really, you know, he's not a like, revolving door any means. Uh, then at left tackle, we have Jason Peters, who's kind of been washed. Absolutely been washed. Probably the worst lineman we've had. Which is sad to see, because he's a legend. I think a Hall of Famer. And absolutely should be a Hall of Famer of the Eagles. I hope he comes back and be a member of the Eagles coaching staff. He's just not been good enough this year. And Dillard, another pick that I absolutely hated. Has, uh, I don't know what he did. He tore something. He's out for the year. Which is phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. One hell of a pick there, Philadelphia. Appreciate it. So the offensive line is going to have to get some reworking. We're going to have to draft particularly well in the offensive line to get cheaper and have a contingency plan for all these older players. But... There's only so much we can do here in year one of this rebuild. At tight end, here's where things get a little interesting. Now, first up, where is Hakeem Butler? Because we got Hakeem Butler. I like Hakeem Butler. I really like Hakeem Butler. I really want him on my team. So, I assume he's right here. We're going to sign you. They moved him to tight end. I'll probably just keep him wide receiver, but I can move him to tight end if we want to. We have to make another cut. Uh, we'll just give it a, I guess, Opeta. So we got a Keen Butler. I like that. I was, I was really hyping him up the college year that he was coming out of Iowa State. He's an absolute monster, one handed machine, 6'5, 227, athletic freak. I like having him. But we're talking about the tight ends first. And I'm going to do this. Supposedly, there's a lot of unrest right now, but Zachers want a new contract. Let's see who wants him. I will 100% trade Zachers. I'm 100% in the side that we should trade Zachers. I'm also. Not like some like where people are anti like Carson Wentz. I'm not anti Zach Ertz. He's the best tight end in franchise history. He is, I still think, the third best tight end in the NFL. But he's paid very well. If he wants to get more with a team in Philadelphia, I'm not gonna like hamper our roster giving him more money when we have Dallas Goddard on the roster. Dallas Goddard is a more complete tight end. Dallas Goddard has a ceiling to produce like Zach Ertz in this offense. I think he's a better athlete than Zach Ertz. And that's no slight at Ertz. It's just business. 100% just business throwing Zach Ertz on the trade block here. Because it's, it's another one six. What are you going to do? You're going to re-sign Zach Ertz. And by the time that it, it, it comes to, you know, decide what you're doing with Dallas Goddard's contract, Zach Ertz is probably going to have that dip in play that's not going to be able to justify the contract extension anyways. So we're going to see if we can get a trade there for Zach Ertz. I'm not going to force a trade. I'm not going to just sell him for pennies on the dollar. But if there's a trade that makes sense, I might make it. Uh, we got Goddard. Like I said, yeah, Goddard's a beast. I love Dallas Goddard. Philly Goddard, sorry. Wide receiver. So we got Alshon Jeffrey. I love everything he did for that Super Bowl year, but absolutely you're going to be our second player that we're throwing on the trade block. I think in real life he's actually on the trade block too. He just can't stay healthy. There's rumors that he's you know, spreading rumors about Carson Wentz and he's the guy that leaks stuff. I, I actually never really bought into that. I always thought Alshon was a real one. You can just see from all the Super Bowl interviews. Like, it doesn't seem like the kind of guy that would chat shit, but it's just one of those things we got to get younger in the position. If I had to keep one veteran between Alshon and Deshaun, I'm going to be keeping Deshaun Jackson, who much like Jason Peters, Looks absolutely washed this season. Uh, Goodwin actually could be fun if we have him uh, on the roster next year. He opted out of COVID. Uh, he would have been awesome to have in real life, but it is what it is. Uh, Arthago Whiteside is terrible. I might actually... <laughs> uh, I, he might not even be on the team for year two. I just do not like him whatsoever. Jalen Rager. 73 hidden dev. We're going to play him a lot. Try to maximize that dev trade. However, in real life, it's just it just can't help but be frustrating. I wasn't a fan of the Jalen Rager pick. You know, but, I mean, you saw in that first game that he was healthy, he had a 51-yard bomb, and him and Carson Wentz missed on another deep touchdown. Like, you're seeing the Rager bombs could be real. It's just no fault of his own, but it can't, you can't help but be frustrated when you see other rookie wide receivers making plays and Jalen Rager's on the sideline hurt. You know, Justin Jefferson, Jalen Rager, those are the big one-two there. And Josh Jefferson just had like 200 freaking yards for the Vikings. And it's like, oh, if we would have traded up a couple picks with Atlanta to get C.D. Lamb. And you see all the damage C.D. Lamb's doing. He's looking at times the best wide receiver on Dallas. 
And Philadelphia, our guy that we got in the first round, is hurt because, of course, he is. You can't help but be depressed. But at least for this mad rebuild, as long as he's healthy, we're going to be going with him as really almost a wide receiver one. Uh, Hakeem Butler, I want to try to utilize that. Uh, John Hightower, solid pick. And the third draft pick, Jack Driscoll, Kevon Loss, and I like Quez Watkins. I like the Quez Watkins pick. Get a lot of speed there. 94 speed is absolutely what Philadelphia needs to be able to throw the ball down deep field. So I, I like our wide receivers. And as soon as we get some of these old guys out, uh, I think we have a young core that can grow and develop. Uh, running backs, another position that I like everyone that we got. Miles Sanders, I think 81 is a little low. I think he should be like, you know, I remember that was my big complaint with the Philadelphia Eagles base Madden 21 ratings. It was like, all right. You're giving Josh Jacobs an 88. Josh Jacobs is a better running back than Miles Sanders, but coming off their rookie of the season, they're in this. I think they're in the same tier of like whatever your group and running back. So if if Josh Jacobs 88 superstar, Miles Sanders needs to be like 84, 83 star at minimum. 81 is a little bit low for my blood, but it is what it is. I think we're going to be able to make him into a franchise running back over the next five years. I like the death beyond it. Corey Clement, obviously from the Super Bowl year, we got Boston Scott who's been. Really, really reliable Philadelphia. And then Jason Huntley, who I really liked during the draft process. We talked about him a lot in the very short-lived Detroit Lions Madden 21 franchise. So I like all four of these running backs. And then we get to the quarterbacks. Luckily, and, and thankfully, Madden gave old Carson Wentz a superstar dev because he's not playing like it right now. But at least for Madden, this is what we're using. I can work with this. Um, the only rating I did not like for Carson Wentz, I think he should have more throw power. I would have given him like at least 92. Somewhere in that range, 90 is not doing his arm justice. But... You know, talking about Carson Wentz, it's 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 a polarizing topic amongst Eagle fans. You're on the side that's always been like kind of Nick Foles over Carson Wentz, and now you're like, let's bench Wentz for Jalen Hurts, which I think is completely wrong. My personal opinion is that this organization has failed Carson Wentz. It's like the Green Bay Packers and Aaron Rodgers all over again. This is a team that has a guy that we saw what he could do in 2017, and since then, we lost Frank Reich, who Nick Foles, because the Bears and the Colts are playing this week, Nick Foles came out and said Frank Reich was the guy... That, that really got the most out of a player. And then we're like, oh, that's nice. I remember I remember that year. And then you go, wait a minute. Then what the fuck is Doug Peterson doing? And then since Frank Reich and all that good coaching staff has left Philadelphia, Doug Peterson and his play call has gone shit. So you're starting to look. I think this is an organization that's failing Carson Wentz. Doug Peterson as a head coach is failing Carson Wentz because this is a quarterback that obviously is struggling. So you need to make your play calls help this quarterback. And they're just not doing it. Quick throws, getting him moving. Oh, let's just actually have him drop back with no offensive line and try to throw it to practice squad wide receivers. It's not working. So I think Doug Peterson has a lot to blame with Carson Wentz and his struggles this year. And I think even more so, our general manager, Howie Roseman, needs to be to blame. Because how bad are you going to continue to botch drafts for this guy? Bust. Could add DK Metcalf. I don't want to be mean to Jalen Rager because I, I I don't like the pick, but he's looked pretty promising, at least in one game. But he's hurt. And if you would have just got Justin Jefferson and not got the guy whose dad has worked for the Philadelphia Eagles organization and we just got Justin Jefferson, maybe we'd have a 200-yard receiver. You know? Um, maybe have, not, you know, as much as I don't want to, you know, I didn't hate bringing Deshaun Jackson, maybe understand that Deshaun Jackson was washed and don't spend that money bringing him back and get a younger playmaker that can be more available. Don't don't draft shitty tackles, you know. Um, stop when we need stuff on the offense to help out our Carson Wentz. Stop just spending all of our fucking money on defensive tackles, you know. It's oh, here's one Philadelphia injury crisis. You know how much how how bad this team could use another highly regarded rookie wide receiver. You know, I, I Watkins, High Tyler could be something there, but another like could have went doubled up. We could have doubled up with Rager and another wide receiver. You know how much better a linebacker at this point would look for this Philadelphia Eagles team? An outside corner that's not a slot corner? But no! We have a backup quarterback here who had turnover problems in Oklahoma and in his first snap in the NFL, fumbled the ball. I would like to appreciate Jalen Hurts for giving me a 200,000 view YouTube video, but that is the only thing that he's done well. Even if Jalen Hurts at some point in his career becomes a starting quarterback for the Philadelphia Eagles and wins us some games... There's still no justifying getting him in the second round, given the landscape of this Eagles team right now. Uh, that is another way, just to fail your quarterback. Let's not get weapons to help him out. Let's get an insurance policy. When, in all actuality, Nate Sudfeld is a solid backup quarterback. We saw him that Super Bowl year. He can close out games against Dallas. Uh, I don't think he won, but he didn't look particularly bad. And that's kind of like 
That's what you want in a backup. You want a backup quarterback that understands the playbook and is not going to come in and throw like five picks like what we used to have with like Matt Barkley. So I, I think as an organization, I am more so on the side of Carson Wentz is not washed. Carson Wentz is not that now or something like that. I think he has zero confidence. I think this organization has absolutely failed him. And I am going to try my best in this rebuild to turn, turn it around for Carson Wentz, turn it around for this organization, and make Philadelphia great again. So with that long introduction out of the way, let's get back into the 2020 season. And just because it's tonight's game, let's get our first gameplay of year one, the 0-2-1 Eagles against the beat-up 2-1 San Francisco 49ers. Oh, there we go. Darius Slate of everyone gets a big TFL on the opening drive for the Niners, and we hold them to a 3 and out. Oh, Deshaun. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, Alshon. There we go. You see is that? Right, right behind Jason Kelsey and Miles Sanders is in for the first score of the game. We go on the play action here. Oh yeah. I catch me off in real life. Carson Wentz probably misses that. But we're able to hit the speedster Jalen Rager. We are just bullying the 49ers right here, looking for our first win of the season. Just, uh, let's just do that. Let's just do a little bit of that. Come on, Carson. There's a little bit of realism there. There's a little bit of Carson Wentz 2020. Ah. Jimmy G able to hit Kedrick Bourne, pull one back, and they punish us for the turnover. Wheels! Look at the speed! Look at the speed! Oh, come on with the slants! They're only hitting slants, man! Only hitting slants. Come on. It's not, Jimmy G shouldn't even be in there. Nick Mullins is playing in this game. Hey, nice slant. Nice slant. All right, two-minute warning. Third and five. First down. We can start to feel kind of comfortable. We can put this one away. So I'm actually going to be looking for... Put Sanders and pass, bro. Ertz or Goddard? Just to just move the chains. And we got Ertz inside, makes the grab. Should be enough. Chew the clock up, get the dub. All right, so we got the dub. Feels good. Look good. Play good. 22-14. Uh, I wonder if any of these stats actually will come true, because we'll see this evening. I'm sure we can come back in the comments and compare it. But we had a touchdown and a pick for Carson Wentz, 178 yards. We had over 100 yards on the ground for Miles Sanders. And a rushing touchdown receiving. Well, that's impossible. You know, unfortunately for Jalen Rager, not going to be on the field. Or Alshon. Oh, we got a lot. It's going to be a rough game. TFL for big play. Slay only one sack for Fletcher Cox. So it's just kind of an ugly primetime game. But the first win of hopefully many as we try to save this 2020 season for the Philadelphia Eagles. So now it's time to worry about some of our in-house stuff that we can deal with and can control. Uh, in terms of in-house free agents, I think Roby Coleman, if he only wants a one-year deal, oh, we have $26 million in the hole, so we can't re-sign anybody. Cool. Um, for scouting, I I'm working my way right now on corners. I think uh, having, a having a good base here on, on some of these top corners, especially maybe scheme fits. We'll get all the man-to-mans. Holden looks like good value. We got Jack Jones, the USC transfer. So I'll get all the man-to-man -man corners, but we have an idea at least of like the first rounders. Um, yeah, I wouldn't hate any of them. We've had Sertain in a rebuild yet, but Sean Wade, Caleb Farley, uh, Adabo, Mukwamu, Marco Wilson, all these guys would be nice and suitable partners to pair with Darius Slay. Uh, I think maybe could be worth looking at some strong safeties too, because Will Parks is going to hit free agency in case we don't want to gamble on Jalen Mills. Maybe getting a long term there. Linebacker for sure. We're going to be looking at Moses, Surratt, Monty Rice for sure. Um, I mean, outside of that, I mean, even Micah Parsons, if somehow, some way, I mean, he could fit. He's that damn good at linebacker. Could look at Jabril Cox at LSU, Patty Fisher. A couple mid round options. I'm not so worried on the defensive end front. I mean, if a BPA is kind of there, then yeah, sure. But I don't know if I'm going to spend all my scouting points 
there. Same with D-Tackle. On the offensive line, you know, again, maybe BPA. I'm more so, for sure, going to try and bring and, and scout some of these speedsters at wide receiver. Rondell Moore would be awesome. Even in the second round, a Tylen Wallace could be nice. Tutu Atwell, Anthony Schwartz might be the fastest player in college. So we definitely will do our due diligence there. And, you know, we're the quarterback factory. So let's just make sure we get our scouting done for our QBs. Now, we do have some trade offers coming in. Alshon Jeffrey is frustrated with his role in the team. So let's see. I will pretty much take almost anything for Alshon. Some twos. Got Blake Cashman at middle linebacker there. So we get a two and a six from Pittsburgh. In reality, what would Alshon Jeffrey fetch? Mm. The argument is a two is way too rich, but if the Patriots are paying a second round pick for Mohamed Sanu, a second round pick for Alshon also kind of makes some sense. So we have New Orleans here, who I don't know how they have any cap room to make that offer to take on his salary. So I'm definitely going to move him for one of these second rounders. A two and a six. A 2-5 and a 7 from Seattle. I, I would, it's like, do you want him in the... Con like, am I worried about him coming back to haunt us if we send him to Seattle? Or do we ship him to the AFC in Pittsburgh? Uh, well, my controller connected. I think we'll take the Seattle deal. We'll send him to Seattle. That leaves us with one last player on the trade block, and that is Zachary Ertz. 90 overall tight end. Eve, oh my god. I mean, hey, a second is probably not bad. I think all these teams that are interested, I might come at them to see if I can acquire a player. And I mean, player for player trades are few and far between. But, I mean, some of these don't even make sense. Like, what? okay, Detroit wouldn't need them because they have Hawkinson. Miami wouldn't need them because they have Gusecki. Eh, Minnesota definitely wouldn't be in on him. They got Irvin, uh, Irv Smith. Tennessee, probably not. They got John U. Smith. Tampa has like eight tight ends, so I don't know why they would do this. New Orleans has... But we'll... They got Higby, LA. We'll find... Uh, we'll, we'll Now knowing that we can get a two from some of these teams, I'm going to approach them and see if we can get maybe a linebacker or something else that can help the team. Can't do it, man. I cannot find any... Of these teams that are offering me a future second, it's not even a 2021. We got a 2022 second round pick. None of them I can get in a swap. Like, I was trying to work something with the Dolphins to be able to get a second and Jerome Baker. We're not budging. I mean, we, you know. Um, so, I assume we'll just. What team would call. Like, I feel like the Patriots. Feels like whoever's the tight end for the Patriots kind of eats anyway. Like Devin Ossie Ossie's always killing it. That also makes sense. So there we go. Zach Ertz is going to New England for a second round pick. There we go. Week five after moving on. Some of the, I don't want to be dead weight, but dead weight. We're first in the NFC East. A 28 to 14 victory over the then undefeated Pittsburgh Steelers. Philly came alive there in the fourth quarter. 14 points. We got three touchdowns, Carson Wentz. We got a rushing touchdown, Clement. 75 yards and a tutty for D Jack. Goddard. He's, he's the guy now. He is the guy. One touchdown. Rager got another touchdown. Back to back games with tutties for him. Couple sacks there. No pick. Oh, you pick for Trevor Williams. Sure. We got some momentum here in Philadelphia. Baltimore was always going to be a tough one, and we fall on the losing end 28-21. We did have a player of the week, which is Carson Wentz. All right, we've kind of saved him a little bit here. We have a breakout scenario here for this Week 7 game against the Giants for our Sega White side. How ironic would it be if he gets a dev trade increase? How ironic would it be like, oh, yeah, it was just, you know, whoever bringing him down, right? It wasn't now that Alshon's off the roster and Zach Ertz, those guys, they were, like, bullying him or something like <laughs> They were bullying JJ, so now he's out. Now he's you know, he's ready to focus on the season. So we'll scout up our little linebackers right there. Let's sim this one, man. Gotta be a. Oh, we have an injury. Who is it? Jalen Mills, broken toe, four weeks, strong safety. We're gonna have to. Well, whatever. He's back up. Will Parks got to step up. We got the one in five Giants. Gotta be a win. Absolutely has to be a bounce back win. It is twenty four three. JJ did not shockingly. Did not get his dev trait. Um, 
Yeah, we'll take that. And we got this week eight game against Dallas. Four and three, three and three. Tell you what. Gonna play this one. Come on, we're at the link. We're actually two overall points higher than Dallas. I can't remember the last time I hopped in and played a game and lost. Let's not have it start today. Oh, ho, 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 Fletcher Cox destroyed that play. All right, I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this right now. Don't like any play that has Darius Slay as the blitzer. But I love it. Avante Maddox jumps the pass for Amari Cooper, returns it across the 50. Dak sucks. Dallas sucks. All right, haven't been able to get much after that pick. I mean, we are in point range, but obviously you want to get a touchdown. Keep the fans in it. Third and five. Maybe a shot to Deshaun. Don't like it, but Jalen Rager underneath two feet in. Drive continues. Miles, come on, Miles. And he finds his way to spin in. Takes the contact from Brandon Carr. Touchdown, Philly. On Darius Slay, too. That's, ah, it sucks. That was a hell of a play. Hell of a pass from Dak. Fuck. Come on, Carson. Come on, Carson. That was a terrible pass by me. Literally, he was like, either... Literally, ah, oh, that's all me. Literally, in my head. I was just like, all right, Miles, see, this guy's one option. He's either going to go with Miles Sanders deep or cover Deshaun Jackson short. And he covered Deshaun Jackson short, and I still threw it there anyways. <laughs> Nine on the 37. Our infield goal range. No turnovers. Points are, points are solid right now. If Philly got it right in the middle, though, it's going to be that easy to move the chains. We're just going to move the chains. What? Let's make a play. Literally, no one's getting open. We'll do it. A ridiculous throw off the oh on the run. Hit Rager. Do we see four special it? Third and goal. Go oh, slants. Everyone else runs slants. We run it and then get tackled. We, you know, we want enough time to kick a field goal. At least here, if it doesn't look good, just throw it away. But it looks great. Jalen Rager, two toes in. This game is tied going into halftime. Oh, excellent execution. Miles Sanders, touchdown, 21-14, Phil. Whatever, man, I don't give a shit. All right, we got Dallas here, third and 15 behind the sticks, four down territory. Fletcher Cox has actually been playing very well. We got we got Daxi and Ghost here with Fletcher Cox of how much he's been winning that matchup against Zach Meyer and two of the best at the job that they do. We'll go cover three. Keep it simple. Protect the sticks. Fourth and 15. Could very well be the game. Makes up for it. Makes up for it. Big play slay. Whiffed on the tackle. Where Zeke got the last Alice touchdown, makes up it there. Game ceiling interception. The hat trick, it's over. The hat trick, it's over. First place in the NFC East belongs to Philadelphia. Coming up from the bye, we had a easy kind of game here against the Giants. We knock them off 33 to 14. Jalen Mills is back from his injury. Tougher opponent here, the 7 and 2 Cleveland Browns. And, uh, yeah, we fall there a little bit. We got the 8-2 and two Seattle Seahawks. Okay, this is a little bit of a murder's row of opponents. I don't think in my life I've ever seen Philly beat Seattle. So I'm not surprised. Uh, in terms of upgrades here, let's just, let's see here. Who do we, who do we really want to highlight here in terms of upgrades that I want to try and get them into a scheme fit? Uh, is Dallas Goddard one? Oof. All right. Oh, he's up to an 83 overall. I don't know why our team's falling out the face of the earth, but let's be honest, it would probably be a little anticlimactic if in year one I was able to completely turn the Eagles season around and just win the rest of the games. We got 9-2 Green Bay. Ooh, 
Okay, well, we're not first in the NFCs, but that's a huge win. Dropping 43. Get a little point here to get Jalen Rager. Uh, let's keep going deep threat. I feel like that's maybe, you know, slot. Slot's nice, but by just going deep threat, I've already got a speed going from, I think it was 92-92. I got him up to 94-94. Still waiting on that dev trade. I don't know what it is for sure, but let's be honest. It's most likely silver. Let's get Fletcher Cox up to a 97 overall. Hopefully, all these guys will be able to take the momentum. From a huge victory over the 9-2 Green Bay Packers. And they could bring that against the Saints. We have an injury here, and it's a Vaugh. Oh, great. Avante Maddox, starting corner, 15-week injury. Compound foot fracture. Broke his foot. Did you have to amputate 15 weeks? Fall 27-21. Malcolm Jenkins gets the better result. Team, we had a player of the week, which was Nikel Roby Coleman. Eight tackles and an interception in a losing effort against Drew Brees and the Saints. Week 15, 6, uh, Arizona. Another team historically Philly always sucks against. But we spoke him. 35 to 16, Fletcher Cox. Four sacks. He's going to have, he might have double digit sacks when all is said and done. All right, big Fletch. I mean, we're paying him to take games over like he just did. And that's exactly what you want to see. We have a skill point to spend out of all these guys. Let's get Carson. Get him up to an 84. Hopefully his stats are going to look okay when all is said and done. I mean, I haven't been playing particularly well with him when I've hopped in and got some gameplay. But who knows? Week 16 is actually a huge game, but I want the Sim to do it. I want the Sim. If we're going to be able to turn this around, it's going to... Fuck off. It's going to be on them. 28-24, we fall... 8-7 red football team. The red football team. Did we get a win? <laughs> I literally thought we got the... We did beat them. 38. I literally thought we got a first round bye for some reason. I was like, oh, we made the playoffs. Good to finish the season healthy. Javon Hargrave pulled his grind up for four more weeks. Hey, but we, hey, we got a player of the week. Carson Wentz finished the year with four touchdowns. Darius Slay. Back-to-back -back Eagles right there. NFC Offensive and Defensive Player of the Week. Pick six for Darius Slay. Carson Wentz had a strong game. I'm not livid about that. Um, let's see here. Usually, I, you know, let's just do it live. Let's save myself some time for it. Oh, I probably should have just went vertical threat there to get his overall up a point. But it is what it is. Is Miles Sanders a scheme fit? Do I have to worry about this? He's absolutely not. So, I don't know. When you auto-spend, it goes for the highest one, right? I've never, you know, it's been a, I probably do way too much Madden videos to not know that. I'm pretty sure if you just auto spend, it goes to the highest one, doesn't auto spend on your uh, scheme fit. But we'll go on here for Rager. It actually counts towards his overall kill. Three short route running. He's star dev. Let's look at the stats here and let's get into the, you know, the real rebuild now for the Philadelphia Eagles. So statistic, okay, well, came second in the NFC least, eight, seven, and one. I think most people right now, if you told me Philly at 0-2-1 could finish 8-7-1, I'd be like, yeah, probably a little bit better than what we deserve through the first three games. Carson Wentz, that's not a bad year. Not, not, a, not an amazing year, but not a bad year. Almost 4,000 passing yards, 31 touchdowns, 12 interceptions. We have on the rushing front, 1,100 yards, 13 touchdowns for Booby Sanders. Yes, sir. Three touchdowns, Carson Wentz, almost 300 yards. I like seeing that scrambling a little bit more. So I'm happy with those numbers. Receiving, Jalen Rager, 77 catches, 1,100 yards, and eight touchdowns. I will saw my foot off if Jalen Rager could finish with over 1,000 yards this year. Uh, Dallas Goddard filled in nicely. Took right over the starting role. Uh, for, I, I do, we, we will look and see what Zach Ertz did. But 76 catches, 800 yards, eight touchdowns for Dallas Goddard. Seven and six for Deshaun. That's not bad. JJ did something. He did something. Okay, let's see right now. Who did we trade him to again? New England? Was it? No. Yes, it was. No, it wasn't. Yes, it was. He finished with 69 catches, 700 yards, and five touchdowns. So I would argue it looks like we're coming ahead on that trade, which as makes it, it, you know, it should. We should be coming ahead. Jason Kelsey didn't give up a single sack all season. No surprise. The best center. Darius Slay led the team with 74. Why are the tackles so low? 
And I have not a single linebacker. Not a single linebacker is a, is it can be seen here. But 74 tackles, four interceptions for Darius Slay, 17 sacks for Fletcher Cox. Nine TFL, seven half sacks, Brandon Graham, solid. Seven half sacks for Josh Sweat. That's, you know, he's on pace to hit that this year. A little bit of a breakout year. I like seeing that. Uh, four picks, Jerry Slay. Three for Philly Will. Uh, NRC with three. At least at least the one corner that we know for sure is going to be back on the roster was very, very nice. Uh, looking at where it stands in to the rest of the league, we're the number 18 offense in the NFL. Defensively, number one. All right. Good job, Jim Schwartz. Yearly awards MVP went to Patrick Mahomes. Dak at three. Harrison Wentz at ten. It's a good start, man. This is a good start. Offense play went to Dak Prescott. Carson Wentz coming in at number seven. BDN at nine. Nice. Defensive play they went to Aaron Dunn. 17 sacks, number seven. Bullshit. Bullshit. Offense rookie of the year went to Jalen Rager. I would. Uh, I would just absolutely cream myself. For the vulgarity, but I would. Kavar Wallace at number 10. QB Drew Brees. Where's Carson at number 7? Best running back, Miles Sanders at 3. Best wide receiver, Jalen Rager at 4. Best lineman, Kelsey at 7. Best D lineman, Fletcher Cox running up behind Aaron. I guess he would Aaron Donald. Did Aaron Donald do better than 17 sacks? I'd be surprised. And then for DBs, our boy Big Play Slay coming in at number 3. Jake Elliott at 8. All right, let's see. Why Fletcher Cox got disrespected? Can we chalk it up to Madden sucks? Or did all these other guys have ridiculous seasons? All right, let's see. Aaron Donald. Fletcher Cox not even there. That's probably why. Didn't have enough tackles. I mean, yeah, well, you know, Aaron Donald's still had an insane year. I'm not. All right, whatever. Whatever. I can see that it's not a robbery, but number seven in defensive player, they were 17 and a half sacks for a defensive tackle. Bullshit. Taking a peek at the Pro Bowl roster from the Philadelphia Eagles. Miles Sanders is running back two. Oh, Jalen Rager. Okay. Well, that's a little harsh, I think. We got Jason Kelsey at center. Fletcher Cox, D tackle one. No, Darius Slay. Buster Scrine made the Pro Bowl and Jamel Dean over Darius Slay. I mean, a couple guys, but oh man, sleep it on Philly. This is a shocking Super Bowl. I don't think I've ever seen that Super Bowl matchup in my life in Madden. The Browns and Cowboys? How unrealistic is that? Um, I guess, you know, for the sake of this rebuild, hopefully Dallas is not winning the Super Bowl. We don't have to have that added pressure. And the Super Bowl is going to Dallas. And we have negative $23 million. So absolutely can't re-sign anybody. So yeah, we got to free up, um, you know, 20 million bucks. So unfortunately, we got to start with Deshaun Jackson. There's 8 million right there. Legend. Probably my favorite Eagles receiver of all time. Maybe not so great off the field. Maybe some of your ideas are better kept to yourself. But, you know, eh, it's time. We got we got, we got, got our new wide receiver one. Jalen Rager. Absolute beast. My God, we're fucked if this guy's our wide receiver two. Um, well, I'll tell you right now, there's $2 million in backup tight ends. Absolutely can just, you know, address that during the draft. Uh, it would have been cool to keep Akeem Butler, but... No monies. I would cut Dillard. Just doesn't make any sense. Jason Kelsey not cutting you. I mean, there's there's some moves we can make to free up like a little bit of money. I don't really want to get rid of BG. Gone. Goodbye. How much more do I need? Bleak Jackson. Goodbye. And I'm just almost at this point. What's dead weight? Who is dead weight here? I would have loved to get out of that Rodney McLeod contract. All right. Uh, are we in the green? Can I proceed this offseason? 
Has the massacre concluded? Now we got 20 million bucks. We actually might be able to make a move or two. Or maybe I didn't even need to make all those cuts. But I did anyways. So in terms of free agency here, 19 million bucks. I don't want to go crazy because let's be honest. Who knows? Ooh. I like that one. If I had to throw an offer on someone so far, I would say I like that one. I, lo I would love the idea of Keanu Neal coming to Philly. I'm going to control this like me. These are the available free agents. Who would I sign with 20 million bucks knowing that, you know, don't want to don't want to spend all that money so that next year it's another type, you know, kind of thing where I have no money to, to really, no wiggle room or anything crazy like that. So I would actually like to bring in a wide receiver. But these wide receivers are all butt cheeks. So it kind of shifts our priorities in the draft to draft another wide receiver high. Uh, in terms of the offensive line, I'm fine with it. That's where all of our money has been sunk into anyways. D-line, I'm good with. Linebacker core could be a little better. Marco leaves a scheme fit, but we'll go with Voshan Joseph there. There's no immediate upgrade. Gator Bias would be pretty nice to bring in Anzalone. Here's a middle linebacker. So there's already some solid bids in there. Might have to go for like the best linebacker that doesn't have a bid on him. Because you know, as much as I would love to try to have like a redemption tour and make TJ Edwards a beast, it's just that's just so much going against him there. If we got a dev trade, if we would have went up started ever something, I could work with that. But the fact that there is no dev, I mean Ruben Foster maybe. All these guys here are pretty much edge rushers. Ben Gideon's not. He's, he's a star dead. I don't know, man. These linebackers kind of suck. Uh, corner. We literally only have two corners on the roster. So is there like a bargain? Gary on Conley is a man that I want. Okay, we'll do that for sure. We'll start here with Gary on Conley, 26, 27, 28. Get him on a two-year deal. He was a guy that I want Philly to draft pretty badly. He's available. We'll see what happens there. Um... I would, I would biasly want Keon O'Neal. And now we have six million bucks. So that's it. We're, we're going to go, we're going to go DBs. We're going to go DBs. I feel okay with that. Because that means we got to go wide receiver in the draft. Nice. Able to get both of them. Gary on Conley. I think I would argue both these guys, affordable deals. Affordable deals for sure. Now, draft time. All right. I'm not going to try to mess this up. Because last time I tried to end on the draft, I because I had to click in and out of my, my screens here, I ended up just making the pick. I'm not going to go in, but I want to assume to our pick, and then we can figure out, and I'll go with the community, as to who we should draft. So first thing you should comment in this video, hopefully you watched it to the very end, is who you want me to draft in the first round. Let's start it. Let's see who's available. When we are on the clock, we probably have, you know, pick 13, 14, probably. 18. Phenomenal. No man's land. Let's look at the board. I already used Jalen Waddle in a rebuild. But I, I honestly, I could go back to it if I had to. Um, so here's who's left. In terms of who we have scouted anyways. Uh, we don't need strong safety. We don't need free safety. Could still use a corner. And of course, it's a corner we've just used in a rebuild. That's a little bit lame, but... I mean, he's there. I'm not 100% against. Like, I, when I can, I will try to use new players, different players. But when it presents itself, I'm not going to, like, you know, just screw myself. The fact that we still got a true first-round talent here at corner, we could go there. We absolutely could go there. Um, not much at linebacker. Surratt, probably not going to be there in the second round, but we really do need a middle linebacker. And the rest of them are not particularly great. I mean, we could trade back, potentially. I don't know. Um, Arvin Wilson, Tefeli at D-Tackle. Quiddy Pay at D-End. Quincy Roche at D-End. Offensive line. I mean, I pretty much just didn't really bother scouting a whole lot of guys on the O-line. We have Jackson Carmen though, at a Clemson first-rounder with a first-round talent. Eckenberg at a Notre Dame first-rounder. Leatherwood of Alabama. These guys aren't brutal-looking. We got, I don't know why we scouted tight ends, but we're fine with that. And at wide receiver, here we go. Jalen Waddles here, the speedster. Devontae Smith. You got Rashad Bateman, Tylen Wallace. They late first round, going to the second round. Just a bubble guy. Uh, there's there's options though. If we decide not to go wide receiver in the first round, second round, we could get a 2 2 Atwell. We could get Olave, Tamorion, Terry. We got a couple third rounders here that are legit third rounders. Schwartz is a burner. Amonra St. Brown from USC, even though I. 
USC wide receivers to Philly. TJ Vasher, 6'6". I'm a big fan. Demetrius Robertson has some value. Um, got some running backs there if we just really want to go all out with the running backs. Lance and Trask are there if we want to continue to be the quarterback factor. I'm going to be honest with you. The two best players that are obvious would be Jalen Waddle and Patrick Certain. And Certain and Waddle, I've already used in rebuilds. But if you if you want them, I have no qualms, especially Jalen Waddle, because it makes a whole lot of sense. Because right now our wide receiver two is freaking JJ or Sega Whiteside. So let me know in the comment section below. You guys control who we draft in the first round here in 2020 with the Philadelphia Eagles. So let me know in the comment section below. I will check it probably after I upload the Eagles postgame grades tonight. Hopefully Philly handles their business and much like we did in this video, can handle the 49ers and get their first victory of the season. But I hope you guys did enjoy. Thank you for watching. As always, your first time stopping by, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. Smash the like button if you enjoyed. And until next time, it's C4 saying peace.